If you're wanting to start the ketogenic diet, but you need some guidance or some help with it, this is gonna be the video for you. Something you need to think about and keep in mind, which most of y'all probably already know this, but what is the purpose for doing this? Is it because you wanna lose weight, because you hopefully wanna get in better health? Maybe you wanna look better naked. Whatever that reason is, you wanna use that as fuel in this four week transition into the ketogenic diet that I'm going to give you. That way you can keep moving forward, not backwards, not just be stagnant and stuck on one period of this. And then even beyond that to make this a complete lifestyle shift or a complete eating style shift for the betterment of your health or getting that annoying weight off of you that you're wanting to get off. So this keto quick start guide that I'm about to give you, as I said, is a four week transition and it's gonna mainly focus on what you need to start cutting out and adding in from week to week. So starting off with week number one is going to be cutting out all drinkable sugars. We're talking about sodas, juices, which are the worst. Maybe you add sugar to your coffee or your tea. What you wanna do over the first week when you decide to start is start weaning yourself off of this stuff. Just slowly cut back day to day until you completely get them cut out. One thing that you could do in place of sugar, say if you're adding it to like your tea or your coffee, would be like either stevia, monk fruit, erythritol. There's a lot of keto approved sweeteners that you can replace with that sugar you're putting in them and they're not gonna mess you up during this transition. Now as far as soda goes, there's a soft drink that is sweetened with stevia and it's called Zivia. Now they have a bunch of different flavors. You can find these on Amazon and I know they also have them at Food Lions and possibly other stores. So now moving into week two, you've cut out all the drinkable sugars or you've replaced them with something that's keto approved. Now during week two, what you're gonna wanna do is cut out all foods with added sugars. You wanna switch to wholesome cooking. You wanna cut out things like uh, the sweets and the candies and the breads, waffles, pasta, crackers, cereal, oats, certain sauces, and you wanna become a food label detective. You wanna make sure that whatever you're buying, if you know that what you're buying is not the only ingredient in it, you need to flip it over and look at the ingredients list. And a good thing to go by is, if you can't pronounce it, you most likely probably shouldn't get it. But I'm also in the description gonna include a pretty lengthy list of different names they use to hide hidden sugars. Some of the most common ones though are gonna be like dextrose, maltodextrin, and also another thing to make sure and to watch out for is going to be monosodium glutamate, which can also be hidden as modified food starch and a few other things. Just in short, the reason that stuff is so bad is it can spike your insulin up to 300%. If you don't know, the whole point of doing a ketogenic diet is to crank the carbohydrate intake down as low as possible. Most people stay at 20 grams and below daily. And the whole reason for that is to get your insulin levels down because in the presence of insulin, you cannot burn any fat whatsoever. Carbohydrates and sugar spike insulin the highest and the most. Protein spikes it just a little bit and fat has almost no effect on insulin at all. Now that's gonna lead us into week number three. Week number three, you should have cut out all the drinkable sugars and all the foods with the added sugars and preferably all the high glycemic carbs. Now, if you haven't got to the high glycemic carbs yet, week three is definitely going to be the week to do it. Like I said, you need to switch to wholesome cooking. You usually do have to cook more when you're doing a ketogenic diet because a lot of processed foods are just not going to be optimal for this. If you're having trouble cutting out like the bread and the pasta and the waffles and stuff like that, there are keto versions of these things that you can make, along with the sweets and the sauces and the other stuff. At this point, you wanna make sure you've got to where you're having 20 carbs or less daily. Once you get to that point, you wanna start adding in healthy fats because you've cranked your carbohydrate intake way down. If you don't replace it with something, you're gonna end up being very hungry and fall off of doing this. Healthy fats are gonna include things like butter, avocado oil, olive oil, ghee, coconut oil, fat that's coming from animal sources like ground beef or chicken, and preferably with the meat stuff, try your best to get grass fed and finished beef. At least try to get organic chicken if you can afford it, because that's gonna be a lot better for your health because how the animals were raised and fed. If it's bad and nasty stuff, it can end up translating to you. But of course, just do what you can afford at least. By adding in these healthy fats, you're gonna have a lot better satiety after meals, and you're gonna find that you may not need to snack in between meals anymore if you're currently snacking between meals. Because a quick fun fact, if you find yourself eating a meal and then 
maybe an hour or two later having to have a snack because either you're tired or your energy is low or you're just straight up hungry again. Carbohydrates actually have that effect. They do not have a real good satiety benefit to them at all. Where on the flip side, fat has higher satiety because it's more calorically dense. So moving into week four, we've cut out all the drinkable sugars, we've cut out all the foods with added sugars, and we've cut out all the high glycemic carbs. This is where you're gonna reach a 100% ketogenic diet. So your macros should be looking like this. You're at 20 carbs or less a day, and those carbs are not coming from any high glycemic carbohydrates. They're either coming from leafy greens or cruciferous vegetables or keto approved sweets or treats, or maybe keto approved breads or pastas. And your protein intake is going to be moderate and your fat intake is going to be higher than your protein intake because a ketogenic diet is a high fat moderate protein low carb diet the reason for this is i mentioned this earlier but we know sugar and carbs spike our insulin and blood sugar real high but then protein also has a little bit of an impact on it too and especially if it's not combined with fat. Protein that's not combined with fat can spike your insulin and blood sugar a pretty decent bit. When you combine protein and fat together, the fat slows the digestion of the protein so that it don't hit your blood sugar and spike up your insulin levels real high. There are some other things that you're gonna have to work through and maybe challenges you may face while doing this, and I am gonna give you some of those. And one is, since you're not gonna have carbs coming in by about week three carbohydrates help hold water on the body so at that point you're going to have to increase your salt intake just make sure you're not using regular table salt you want a good mineral salt because it has a better mineral profile it don't have just straight sodium it's got sodium with a little bit of potassium and magnesium and so on doing this is going to prevent you from getting the keto flu which is not an actual flu and all it really is is dehydration because when you cut all the carbs out you end up dumping a lot of water and with that water goes your minerals and electrolytes so you have to replace those another real big challenge that i hear about people facing with this is the sweets they have a hard hard time putting down the sweets well, that's where you need to do what I was saying earlier. You need to replace the sweets or whatever it is with something keto approved so that you can power through that and not fall off and go back to eating all the crap and garbage that you, you was eating before. When you keep on pushing and going and you start seeing the weight come off and things happen, that's what's going to drive you and push you forward. Remember, I said that at the beginning of the video. Now, at about 90 days, three months, if you're doing this correctly and strict, you should reach fat adaptation along with a complete microbiome shift which is the gut bacteria that you have they also have to shift over because their fuel source the stuff that you're eating may not be feeding the bacteria that you had before and it's actually been suggested that your gut bacteria due to a nerve that runs from your intestines up to your brain can actually influence your cravings on things but at this point doing keto and sticking to it should actually be just be coming to you naturally and very easy not to mention you'll be experiencing all the great benefits increased energy you don't have those energy slumps uh, you're a lot clearer minded you don't have a foggy mind you're going to be able to concentrate better you're going to have an enhanced mood and be able to possibly do more things you just want to do before you did keto because before you started this you never felt like doing anything but laying around so one thing that I just really want to stress though is during this four week transition, if you're having a problem with one of the weeks, whether it be one, two or three, or hopefully not four, but if you're having a problem and you need to take it out, say another half a week or another whole week, go ahead and do that. But like I said, don't stay stagnant or even start backpedaling. If you didn't get it the first week, buckle down, stay strong and tell yourself you are going to reach the next point of this in the next week. Just keep telling yourself, how bad do you want it? Guys, I hope this keto quick start guide helps you get on track with the ketogenic diet. But as always, keep it keto, keep it healthy, and I'll see y'all next week.